Thanks to a few suggestions in the comments and a vote over on my Discord, we're going to be building the Scarlet Witch from Marvel in Dungeons & Dragons. You can play as the Scarlet Witch, but you have to start somewhere and we're going to start with the race. Wanda Maximoff is essentially human, but depending on what point in the comics you're going with, she's either a human or a mutant or a human that was altered by some other force. I mean, the comics get very confusing because for 32 years she was known as Magneto's daughter, and then in 2014, they kind of retconned that and said it's not biologically her father, but whatever. We're going to go ahead and stick with human, but go with human variant because you're a little different than the average human. This allows us to pick up a feat right away, so we're going to choose telepathic. This allows us to boost up one spell casting modifier, which we're going to choose in a second, but it also gives you some telepathic abilities, which is pretty spot on for Wanda. So you can telepathically communicate with somebody within 60 feet of you, and you can cast detect thoughts without expending a spell slot, but you can only do it once per long rest. You also get a skill from being a human variant, so we're going to grab perception because it's just generally helpful, and we'll be able to get most of the other skills that we want from other pieces of this build. And considering all of the ridiculous titles that you're given throughout the Marvel Universe, both in comics and in movies, one of the most notable of which being the Queen of Magic, we're going to grab the background, Mage of High Sorcery. This comes from the Dragonlance Source Book. This grants us skill proficiencies in Arcana and History, but more importantly, it gives us the feature Initiate of High Sorcery. This allows us to align with one of the three moons, which might not be very accurate for the comics, but, you know, we gotta pick something here. So we choose the Moon of Nui Tari, I think that's how you might pronounce it. This will allow us one cantrip, so we're gonna grab Minor Illusion, and then we get two spells from a very limited list but we chose this particular moon because it allows us to choose the spell Dissonant Whispers. This is all about infecting somebody's mind and scaring the crap out of them. So you whisper in somebody's ear and then they're just completely screwed up. They take 3d6 psychic damage and then they have to immediately run in a direction as much as they can. The other spell we're going to grab is Hex just because it can be pretty useful if used properly, which just allows any damage we deal to get boosted by an additional 1d6. And we get to curse somebody's abilities but only with one stat. So if you want them to do worse on their strength checks, that's what you want to go with. You can cast each one of these spells once per long rest, but if you have spell slots, which we will have, you can also just cast them using a spell slot if you need to. Then when it comes to some stats, we're actually able to min-max while still staying very true to character. We're going to have some starting stats that look like this, focusing on charisma, dexterity, and constitution. Then we get to boost up each one of those by one point because we get two points from being a human variant, and we get one extra point from having the telepathy feat. So those all get rounded out to 16, and obviously we have a lot of charisma, and that's for good reason, because when we choose a class, we have a decent amount of spell casting because you are the Scarlet Witch and you get that power from within. It's not from making a deal with some powerful force. It's not from a ton of studying. It is just something you inherently have within your bloodline. And that allows us to choose Sorcerer. Sorcerers use Charisma for their spellcasting, and they get to choose two skills. So we're going to lean into that Charisma and grab the skills Persuasion and Intimidation. Sorcerers also get saving throws in Charisma and Constitution, which is very, very useful for a spellcaster, because anytime you have to concentrate on a spell, you're going to make a Constitution saving throw, and having proficiency in that is really going to help. Then, when you become a Sorcerer from the get-go, you get to choose a Sorcerer's Origin, otherwise known as a subclass. And I was very, very tempted to go with an aberrant mind sorcerer. They get more telepathic abilities than most other sorcerers, and they even get the ability to fly while allowing themselves to glow in the process, which seems very accurate to the MCU. However, a lot of their abilities are kind of around being some sort of an aberration, and they try and lean into you becoming this sort of like slimy creature, and that doesn't feel quite right. Plus, Wanda's also known as the Queen of Chaos. It is one of her very notable titles. And with that in mind, plus everything that happens in WandaVision, where she kind of just 
bursts out and alters all of reality almost uncontrollably, I think a better fit for Wanda is gonna be a wild magic sorcerer. A wild magic sorcerer gets two features from this subclass right away. They get wild magic surge. So once per turn, when you cast a spell of first level or higher, the DM can have you roll on the wild magic surge table. Now there's a bunch of altered versions of this online, but the more official version has 50 different choices on the Wild Magic Surge table. So you roll a D100 and just see what happens. Another time you might have to roll on this Wild Magic Surge table is from the feature Tides of Chaos that you also get at first level. So you can choose to gain advantage on an attack roll, a saving throw, or an ability check, but you can only do this once per long rest, unless the DM allows you to roll on the Wild Magic Surge table to be able to do it again, regaining more uses of this basically anytime more chaos ensues. And I'm not gonna run through the entire Wild Magic Surge table, but most of them would actually fit pretty well for the Scarlet Witch. Don't get me wrong, there's a few weird ones like you suddenly grow a beard until you sneeze and then that beard turns into feathers and explodes from your face, or you can accidentally turn into a potted plant, but most of them can be a little bit more beneficial, like granting you immunity to becoming intoxicated. Or you can suddenly cast magic missile out of nowhere, or you can regain some health or levitate, or the especially powerful ones like you immediately gaining another action to use, or regaining all of your sorcery points. But we'll get into the sorcery points in just a second. First, we gotta grab a couple spells because we get some cantrips and some spells right away. Now, I'm not gonna cover every single one, but in general, being a sorcerer has one limiting factor, and that's the amount of spells you're able to learn. By default, you're kind of stuck with an absolute maximum of 15 spells available to you. So we have to be very conservative in our choices as we level up, but the cantrips are a little easier. You definitely want to grab some regular blasty stuff, but also make sure to grab Mind Sliver. It's one of the few cantrips that is more mentally focused, and it still deals some damage. As far as first level spells, we got to grab some of the basics. We gotta grab Mage Armor, so that way we have a bit more defense. Amp that up with the spell Shield. Grab the infamous Silvery Barbs, which is generally a little broken, but it fits pretty well with Wanda, basically allowing you to use your reaction to impose disadvantage while also granting somebody else advantage. And overall, that's just at the cost of one first level spell slot. Then get some generic Magic Blasting with Magic Missile. Then at second level, you finally get those Sorcery Points we mentioned. At second level, you can only use it on Font of Magic, allowing you to trade Sorcery Points for more spell slots so you have a little more spell casting to use throughout the day. But at third level, you can use those sorcery points for other things, because at third level, you get meta magic. Meta magic allows you to alter your spells in certain ways. Unfortunately, you can't alter any spells that happen due to your wild magic surge table rolling, but when you're intentionally casting a spell, you can alter them, and we're gonna be able to learn to do that in two ways right when we get this feature. You can spend the sorcery points for either twin spell, allowing you to use any single target spell and target two creatures instead of just one, and then also grab quicken spell. So now any spell that would take an action to cast, you can do as a bonus action, freeing up your action to cast a cantrip if you want to. Also at third level, you get access to second level spell slots. And there's a few that fit very well for the Scarlet Witch, especially early in the MCU when she's really affecting people's minds. You can grab Crown of Madness infecting somebody's mind and kind of forcing them to attack one of their allies or whoever you choose for them to attack. And they have to do that before doing anything else every single turn. Or you can grab Mind Spike for just some general psychic damage. Or finally, Phantasmal Force, allowing you to start twisting the mind of whoever you decide to affect with it. Then at fourth level, we get an ability score improvement. So let's just go ahead and boost up our charisma by two points because that's most of what we're needing as a sorcerer. Then at fifth level of sorcerer, we get access to third level spell slots. And like I said, we have to be very conservative with the spells that we choose. So we're just gonna grab two here. It's gonna be fly because you need to be able to fly as being the Scarlet Witch. And we're gonna grab enemies abound. So whoever's the target of this sees anybody as an enemy. But one quick tip just for D&D specifically and less the Scarlet Witch, don't target a werewolf with this if they're in a pack of werewolves. They will endlessly be fighting each other because werewolves don't do magic attacks, but they're immune to non-magical attacks. So they're just gonna be 
swiping at each other endlessly. Trust me, it happened to me in a game, and I just kind of sat there and let them attack each other forever. Then at 6th level, you get another feature from your Wild Magic subclass. So now anytime you see somebody make an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can spend two sorcery points and then roll a d4. Then you can either add that d4 to the roll or subtract it if it's one of your enemies. Then at 7th level of sorcery, you get access to 4th level spell slots, so we're just going to grab Ralathim Psychic Lance. I was tempted to grab the Tasha's Mind Whip ability of a lower level, but we knew we were going to get this a little later, so I wanted to grab it instead. It forces a creature to make an intelligent saving throw, which most creatures are actually really bad at, and on a failed save, they take 7d6 psychic damage and they're incapacitated until the start of your next turn if they manage to successfully roll the saving throw they still take half damage and they're not incapacitated but either way it's pretty solid because being incapacitated means they can't take any actions or reactions then at eighth level of sorcerer you get another ability score improvement so we're just going to go ahead and max out our charisma because that helps all of our sorcery stuff. Then at ninth level of sorcery, you get access to fifth level spell slots. And since the Scarlet Witch kind of has just generic magic powers, might as well grab the most generic thing possible with telekinesis, allowing you to move or grab things or whatever just with your mind. Then at 10th level of sorcery, you get to choose one more meta magic option. And at this point, you've probably got a few friends in the Marvel Universe. So we're gonna grab Careful Spell. So any spell that might accidentally hit some of your allies, you can make sure that they automatically save on whatever saving throw is tied to that spell. And if there's anybody in your party that has like the evasion ability, that means they're gonna take zero damage, but at least they're gonna take probably half damage, which isn't quite as bad. Then at 11th level of Sorcerer, they get access to six level spell slots. So we're gonna grab the spell, Mental Prison. This makes people feel trapped in a mental prison, obviously from the name, but it also deals a significant amount of psychic damage, even if they wind up saving on the spell. Overall, it's pretty darn powerful and it fits pretty well with the Scarlet Witch. Then at 12th level of Sorcerer, you get another ability score improvement. So let's go ahead and help out your armor class by boosting up your dexterity by two points. Then at 13th level of sorcery, you get access to 7th level spells. And the Scarlet Witch has a very iconic crown slash headpiece or whatever it's called. And being the queen of chaos, you need that crown of stars. The spell crown of stars is actually really, really powerful. You summon this crown into existence and then it has floating energy around it. This creates seven motes of that energy and you can fire each one of those out separately using one bonus action to send one out each time. And if you hit somebody with that blast of energy, it deals 4d12 radiant damage. Not to mention this spell only uses bonus actions, it doesn't require concentration, so summoning this crown at the beginning of battle can really amp up your damage output. Then at 14th level of sorcery, you get another feature from Wild Magic called Controlled Chaos. Now you have a little more control over the chaotic nature of your magic within you. So whenever you have to roll on that giant magic surge table, you can roll twice and then choose which outcome you want to happen. Then once you hit 15th level of sorcerer, you get access to 8th level spell slots. So there's only one spell that's very worth grabbing here and still fits with the character. And that's Dominate Monster. This allows you to control the mind of basically any type of creature. So taking control of the mind of somebody like the Hulk can really lead to some intense outcomes. Then at 16th level of Sorcerer, you get another ability score improvement. So we're just gonna go ahead and boost up our dexterity one more time, maxing it out, making it so we have a pretty solid armor class. Then at 17th level of Sorcerer, you get to choose one more metamagic ability. And we wanna make sure people are less likely to resist our spells. So we're gonna grab the metamagic ability, Heightened Spell. This forces somebody to roll a disadvantage when they're trying to roll a saving throw against one of your spells. But also at this level, you get access to the most powerful spell slot you can in Dungeons and Dragons, which is a ninth level spell slot. So we're gonna grab the ninth level spell, Wish. If you need to alter an entire town to look like some idyllic thing you know from TV shows, recreating WandaVision, one of the only ways you can pull that off is with something like Wish. Wish is actually a lot more limited than people assume, but the DM can lift a lot of those restrictions and make it so Wish is a little more powerful. Then at 18th level of sorcery, you get another feature from Wild Magic called Spell Bombardment. And frankly, this is kind of a lame capstone but it adds a little bit to your damage. If you roll damage, 
for any of your spells and you happen to roll any of those dice being a max number. So if you roll a bunch of d6s and any of those dice has a six, you can then take one more damage dice, roll it and add it to the total, just boosting the overall damage by one damage dice. You can only use this once per turn. And honestly, I'm a little let down, but this was one of the first sorcerer subclasses to be allowed in fifth edition. So it's not gonna scale quite as well as some of the others. And at 19th level of sorcerer, you get another ability score improvement. So let's just go ahead and boost up our constitution by two more points, improving our health and our ability to concentrate on spells. And then at 20th level of sorcerer, you get sorceress restoration. You have to use sorcery points on a lot of things. And sorceress restoration allows you to regain four sorcery points whenever you finish finish a short rest. And considering you only have a number of sorcery points equal to your level in Sorcerer, getting an extra four sorcery points here and there can be pretty helpful. That brings us all the way to 20th level, which is the max you can get in Dungeons and Dragons. So let me know what you think about this build. And if there's any other builds you want in the future, let me know in the comments down below. If you want access to the full character sheet with all of the spells and all of the cantrips and everything else I might not have mentioned, feel free to check out my Patreon where I have access to all the character sheets for all of my builds. And you can be just as awesome as some of these amazing patrons scrolling on by. But then there's the especially awesome player character patrons, Krembro, Natron209, Johnny Dyer, Kevin Shirley, Zephros, That Funny Man 57 Joshua Maynard, CGC2014, Afstorm, Elisa Martinez, Panda Milkshake, Ted Z, Andrew Nobles, Carcat Kitsune, Decker Joint, Z13, Viral Narvar, Daniel Galvin, and the Dino21. Then there's the Dungeon Master level patrons I play D&D with, Shane Gilroy, Daniel Saffler, Conman ZX, Cyber Society, Zalvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then going above and beyond anything I ever expected is my god tier level patron, Gamestake. He contributes an incredible amount that really helps support this channel. So a very special thank you to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And make sure to subscribe because those that subscribe get more nat 20s on their next D&D sessions. And I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as the Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff from the Marvel Universe, in Dungeons and Dragons.